has come to the nation, but the captain is continuing another battle, that of an adequate sea force to protect the peace. He is meeting great opposition and has been summoned to appear before the Marine Committee to explain his views. I have continually suggested what I thought would promote the honor of our Navy and make it serviceable to our country. But my voice has been like a cry on the wilderness. Sir, the finances of the nation do not permit us to follow your suggestions. We can't afford to be without sea power. Ships must be built and maintained, officers and men trained to high standards. Captain, we all agree that you have been instrumental in helping the American flag become respected among European nations. But most definitely, we cannot afford a fleet such as you propose, unless in an emergency. The best way to prevent an emergency is to have such a fleet. We do not concur. Then I take it I'm without employ. Not necessarily, Captain. In a few years' time, Congress might be willing to grant funds to follow your suggestions. Until that day arrives, you can be serving us well by gaining further experience in your profession. The Empress Catherine of Russia has applied through our envoy in Paris for a loan of your services. You will be given the rank of Rear Admiral and will command certain other fleets. What do you say, sir? I'd be allowed to retain my commission in the United States Navy. Most emphatically, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Majesty sees fit not to receive me. Must have patience. Patience sir. is a commodity I've always found difficult to digest. Good evening, Your Excellency. I have good news, Admiral. Her Imperial Majesty has graciously consented to give you an audience. When will this event take place and where? At the Imperial Palace and at one o'clock. Settle our account, Willie. We'll get a full night's rest, put on our best rig in the morning, then off to the palace for orders. Oh, no, sir. <clears throat> the audience is not for tomorrow. It's for two hours hence. At one o'clock in the morning? One o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's just when the day begins for her imperial majesty. <laughs> Generals and admirals, they never heard the shot fired, save for the salutes given on her Imperial Majesty's birthday. Boudoir promotion. Son Excellence, le contre-amiral John Paul Jones. Мы с радостью принимаем адмирала на службу. Her Imperial Majesty welcomes you to her service. So strahlende Augen, wie stramm sein Wahnsinn. Amusing in my appearance, sir. On the contrary, Your Excellency, you are making a very good and serious impression. Il est vrai qu'ici, ce n'est pas Paris, mais nous 
vous essaierons de vous consoler, Amiral. Il y aura beaucoup de fêtes, beaucoup de gaieté, beaucoup de choses que vous aimerez, Amiral. Her Imperial Majesty hopes you enjoy the season. There will be many fêtes, much gaieté. I was under the impression I came to Russia to fight a war, not dance, sir. Please tell Her Majesty I think it my duty to join my ship as soon as possible. Son Excellence fait preuve d'une grande noblesse et manifeste le désir de rejoindre le combat le plus vite possible. Comme il lui plaira. You might also inform Her Majesty I'm not unacquainted with the French language. And I, sir, speak English. Before making any abrupt decisions, Admiral, consider. your ship as quickly as possible? My duty, ma'am. We are not disappointed. Black Sea. This is where my fleet, your command, is based. The ships are in bad condition, their crews in worse discipline. You will correct these abuses, Admiral. The enemy is based here. He is both courageous and bold. His harbors are protected by well-manned forts. You will destroy both his ships and his forts. Those are my instructions, Admiral. Yes, Your Majesty. It does seem a pity to send the dancers home so early. And perhaps it might not horrify your stern principles too much to raise the glasses and make a toast. Make a toast. Success and victory be granted to the fleet of your Imperial Majesty. As usual, the Admiral is displaying brilliance and bravery. He works day and night, not only fighting the enemy, but also reorganizing and training his command. He meets with every kind of opposition, both ashore and afloat, from friend and foe alike. I have much news about friend. Some good and some bad. I'll tell you the good first. Despite constant interferences and poor ships, he has won a brilliant battle in the Black Sea. The campaign is now concluded and he's resigned from the Russian service. As you already know, King Louis has bestowed upon him the rank of Chevalier. Our Republic is firmly against its citizens receiving titles. However, in this case, Congress has voted an exception. John Paul Jones will be permitted to accept the honor. Thus, as I see it, my dear young lady, a major impediment has been removed from a certain union. But you spoke about bad news. From childhood, he has led an exacting life of toil and battle, afloat and ashore, fighting not only his enemies, but also defying the laws of nature. Sooner or later, the inevitable was bound to happen. This morning, I received a letter from his aide, Mr. Woolley. Amy, for the first time in his life, 
John Paul Jones is ill. Seriously. He couldn't come in ill. went with the doctor to get new medicine. I'm a navigator. I well know my position. The course set for me. My suggestions, if they were written, doctor, would you see that they were read? I would, John. Willie must get pen and paper. I will write for you. Keel timber of this new navy must be in the selection of the list of officers. It is by no means enough that an officer be a capable mariner. He must be that, of course, but he must also be a great deal more. He must be as well a gentleman of liberal education, a fine manner. Punctilious courtesy and the nicest sense of personal honor. He should be the soul of tact, patience, firmness, justice, and charity. As he should be universal in his rewards, so should he be judicial in reproof. When a commander has properly exercised these qualities, he is only to await the appearance of the enemy. His ship and his men will be ready. The spirit of John Paul Jones continues to serve and inspire us. The spirit of the man who said, I have not yet begun to fight.